All right, good evening to all. Again, uh, we will be starting off a segment here again of Witnessed. And for those who may be listening even after this live video, which has been recorded, who may be listening on YouTube, you do want to go ahead right now and click the uh, subscribe button so that way you can stay in contact for more videos like this. And uh, definitely, uh, we will be starting off this entire live. And uh, we will be having a wonderful guest here joining us. Uh, joining uh, just to give an idea of what we're doing, uh, basically this entire live video on witness, one of the inspirations was in the book of Matthew 24. You're looking at verse 14, uh, basically where it's telling us that, uh, and, I, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness. And as it being preached as a witness, it says, then the end shall come. So what brings about the end of this world is the gospel being preached and proclaimed. But the gospel is not just to be preached from the pulpit. I believe the gospel is also to be witnessed. And what a most powerful impact than the witness of one experience. A witness is one who has a first-hand experience. And I believe today, as uh, we'll be hearing from our guest who has joined us live, we'll be seeing an experience that will be able to impact and transform lives and again, this is not your regular pulpit, um, pulpit sermon. This is not your regular Sunday or, or Sabbath sermon. This is a real-life experience that others have gone through that I pray by God's grace may be a blessing and a means of encouragement um, to others who are listening. And it's something that is powerful because in Romans 1 verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the same gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And it brings forth a power in our very lives. And as she shares with us, I pray that many will be blessed as a result, uh, and in the, as a result as well. So, um, so we do have our guest here with us. And before we do begin and before we start, I'd like to uh, send you on. Sash, uh, sorry, I'm saying your name. What is your name? Tell us your name <laughs> and also tell us where you're coming from. All right. So, hi, everyone. Good evening. Sasha Shea, I'm joining from New York, originally from Jamaica, but <laughs> joining from New York, so. Wonderful, wonderful. So it's nice being able to have you on, and uh, we do look forward to what you'll be sharing with each and every one of us this evening. So again, if any one of you are you're listening right now, you definitely want to be able to drop whatever you're doing. If you're in your uh, uh, vehicle, you know, keep it on. If you're in your bedroom, you know, do not uh, have any other distractions because I believe you need to be able to hear what is being shared. So again, uh, share with your friends and, and family uh, right now by just clicking the share button, inbox your friends and everyone else who may need to be on this, who may need to hear this. And um, as we go along as well, we'd love to hear from you uh, any feedback. So what are we going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and begin with a word of prayer, then head into a, a yet powerful message of, of an experience that the Lord desire us to hear even this evening. So let us pray even now. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you again, O oh Lord, for your leadings and your guidance, for allowing us to be here even today, where we can be able to hear a word from you, from an experience of one, and I pray it may be a means of encouragement as we uh, learn from others, the lives that others have lived and are living, and the example. We thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So we have uh, uh, Sasha here with us, and for the first time, uh, I will be also hearing her experience and her testimony, so it will also be a blessing to me as well. And um, tell us, what was the title of, of, the, of the, your entire uh, experience that you'll be sharing? Um, basically titled it, In the Midst of It All. And in, the idea, yes. I guess, behind that is, you know, just to remind us, regardless of whatever we're facing or whatever we've been through, that, you know, Christ is still with us in the midst of it all. So. Oh, yes. So that's powerful. That's powerful. And one of my favorite texts in the book of Matthew 28, the very last verse, the mm -hmm. promise where it says that, Lo, I am with you even right. until the ends of this world. Right. You know, <laughs> through it all, in the midst of everything else, which I'm yep. longing to hear, um, that Christ has been and he is with you. So again, uh, so tell us then. So uh, your entire life experience, what, what was your life like before coming to Christ? I mean, just give us some... Um, I mean, we want you to be real and just let us know what it was like before actually um, coming to Christ. Okay, so I guess uh, prior to like really, you know, giving my heart fully to Christ, I would say I 
was raised with the knowledge of who God was and yes. you know like the you know, typical usual where you know of God and you're instructed to like worship and read your bible and that type of stuff so i had that understanding of who god was but it was never anything where okay we went to church or you know did any of that so prior to really like wanting to have a serious deep relationship with god i was really just the, the girl who knew of god read the bible if i felt like it on my own no one was forcing me to do it if i didn't you know if i didn't want to and um as a result off that I would say there were definitely certain experiences you know certain things that happened and it really all came down to pretty much upbringing right <laughs> like just like yes. the bible tells you when you train up a child in the way that they should go they wouldn't depart from it and you know there were a lot of like uh situations I'd say that came up where it was just like I had to remember okay I remember reading that this was wrong so I probably shouldn't do this you know but uh, yeah, to touch to touch on that, I'd say that for the starter yeah. was <laughs> okay. Good, good. So then, so then you're raised with a knowledge of Christ and right. uh, growing up in your entire home. So, uh, what was the age group among that you you were uh, around that time? What was your age um, group? Your age range? I would say from roughly the age of, of course, birth <laughs> until you know, like up until roughly about ten. Yes. I want to say about 10 years old. Um, I remember, you know, different, like, a range of different occurrences that would really kind of solidify the idea to me that, okay, it's either I'm going to want to choose to know who God is or I'm going to completely turn my back. And when I say that, I mean, for example, when you experience, like, you know, a traumatic event, right, as a child, yes. you aren't able to process that in a way where obviously an adult would process it and say oh okay you know this happened it wasn't my fault blah 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 right as a kid you internalize a lot of that stuff and only because of you know God's grace and like his love and the fact that I was able to read promises in the bible for myself again you know it was kind of like that comfort that solace that says okay even though these things happened or even though I've seen these different things or, you know, whatever the case is that God's love is still great enough for me. And I saying, even saying that, um, I will also add that the devil definitely, you know, would work on the whole idea that, okay, um, you, you went through these experiences and you face these situations and, you know, because of that, you spiraled into something else or, you know, whatever. And he tries to use that. Right. So for an example, um, I will say, I know, uh, let me see. What's one example. Cause like, there's so many that, yes, you know, yeah. in my room, but give us one, um, give us one. <laughs> all right. So one example that I know a lot of, uh, young Christians, especially, uh, that they deal with. It's like, you know, based on perhaps trauma or based on idleness or curiosity. However they got there, they end up into a place where they most likely have viewed porn or have, you know, participated in some sort of, like, illicit whatever, right? Yes. And, like, I remember for me, based on different experiences that I had, like, you know, as far as um, things where, obviously... Like, I knew that clearly if you, you know, you're like, whatever these things were, they were wrong, but it still wouldn't, it still didn't stop the fact that, okay, for a certain age group or whatever, um, I pretty much got exposed to the whole idea of, oh, yes. look, there's porn or whatever, you know, and as a kid, again, it's very hard for you to kind of like separate yourself from yes. oh, okay because you're not really sure like is this necessarily wrong or whatever right yes, yes. so stuff like that and I remember of course you know I won't necessarily go into that aspect too much because that by itself could be a whole yes, you know topic but... and, and the thing too is <laughs> it's good that you mention it because it's some it's, it's something that many have experienced and maybe right. are experiencing right now right. and it definitely needs to be spoken about because right. how many of the platforms where people will be real and speak about 
what God has given victory over, right. and um, and you know, it, it, so then you can go and you know, let us know. I mean, uh, uh, different, you know, how you were able to overcome certain things, so that way others who also may be listening in certain right. areas <laughs> may also get, um, you know, learn from your yeah. example as well. So I think I'd say that uh, in terms of like, okay, so for everything, right? In terms yeah. of that that was kind of like the, oh, okay, everything else is kind of going downward in life, you know, quote unquote, the safe, the safe escape. And because, before you, you continue, know... on, at that time, introduce all those things, you were basically like nine, 10 years old. Probably a little bit younger, unfortunately. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So and, then, um... you know, <laughs> at any age, we could be exposed yeah, to things. Right. That and are, and you I know... think that's, that's the thing that people don't realize. Like, yes. all it takes is, some sort of introduction unfortunately oh, yes. and you know it's just like it's a spiral so yes also i would say in the midst of that um there was you know like the, the whole coupling as well of the fact that i was definitely like super super sick like my asthma was you know at a <laughs> a ridiculous all time yes. like always in the hospital you know all of that stuff and i feel like for a lot of, you know, for a lot of it, I would go through that phase where it was just like, Lord, why? You know, like, why why me kind of thing? And it took really understanding that when God says he will never leave you nor forsake you, like really understanding what that meant, you know, yes. and really internalizing that to realize like, okay, even though you have these different experiences, you are able to overcome, you're able to actually still progress right and um i think uh, what i also will say is how how i definitely overcame um you know just seeing seeing uh the, the the sickness and like all these different things right is really just learning how to have faith in god right really trusting and not just saying oh i trust because you know cliche or whatever yes. right but like really learning how to actually trust god because when it comes down to it he's really all that we have right and i remember um in terms of for example with my asthma like i remember when i was younger like i said it used to be so bad right and at that very young age is when i really learned what the importance of prayer really was because I remember we'd be in the hospital so much it literally became like I knew it inside out right yes <laughs> and um I remember one like one of the times the doctors were telling my mom like basically she's you know she's just gonna have to get admitted and basically be in the ward or whatever because it was just like they kept sending me or switching my medication or whatever and clearly I'm there like the next day right mm -hmm. so it wasn't making sense and I remember at that time as much as we weren't necessarily attending church I remember she prayed right like because she just didn't want me to have to stay there thankfully and you know I remember she prayed about it and she was just like really asking God like to you know even if he doesn't take necessarily yeah. take it away but to subdue it and I will say from that to be honest like I've never had to be hospitalized again for, mm, you know, like for wow. asthma. So from that age, I remember, I, I want to say I was probably, probably eight or so, you know, yes. and I remember like that impacted me in the, you know, the fact that, okay, prayer is serious, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I would say throughout the course of life, of course, as things, as different things happen, you continue to learn what you know, like the real importance of prayer and the real importance of continually having that trust and faith in God. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that was OK. So then before we move into how you were drawn to Christ as well. So we saw different things that you were experiencing. You were experiencing different uh, illnesses from a very young age, which, again, also had some sort of an impact upon you even later on being able to accept Christ fully because mm -hmm. just seeing the power of prayer in your life first right. hand then that was a powerful witness. Then now, you know, you had several different struggles that you were mentioning. And again, things that 
people mentioned, you're exposed to things that many are exposed to, are probably even addicted to even today. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, so from a very young age now, how were you now being drawn to Christ and being able to say, okay, you know what, let me uh, begin to lay aside maybe certain things that you are you were doing, you're engaged in, and um, that wasn't necessarily of Christ. So I think uh, a key part of that really was the fact that my mom always instilled in me, you know, who Christ was. So I always had, like, in the back of my mind, like, I want to make it to heaven, right? <laughs> That's been the goal since I was a little kid. Like, the, you know, the way how she would read the bedtime stories to me yes. as a kid, you know, like, so that was always in my mind. So I felt like regardless of everything that would happen, that was always in the back of my mind, like, well... You still want to make it to heaven, right? So this little thing that you're doing here that obviously is contrary to God, you think you're going to get there like that? You know, so that would play in the back of my yes. mind. And I remember, um, like, even in, I couldn't do, like, you know, crazy things or whatever, to be honest. But at the same time, it's just like, I would try my best to always go back to, okay, what did the Bible say? You know, yes. and I know for like a lot of people, sometimes that's like the last source that you want to look to. But for me, that really was just like, because it was all I knew as a kid, yes. <laughs> when, re when it really came down to it, I kind of, you know, I would open it and was like, okay, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't, I don't know, but I hope, <laughs> I hope I find what I need to read it as much, but I was just still hopeful that you know, in this moment where I'm like, look, Lord, I feel like I'm definitely going to be strained because clearly I'm seeing everything, you know, fall apart around me or um, I'm, I'm struggling to try to wholly commit my life to you. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to do what is yes. right. I want to completely submit because back then, you know, I was, I was like, Clearly, like I said, I wasn't raised in the church, so I had a full routine, you know, especially on like Saturdays back then. I didn't refer to it as Sabbath. Yes, yes. Saturday was like my whole routine. You know, you go to whatever YMCA, do whatever activities, go to the library, do your homework, you know, that type of stuff. And I remember when I came into the knowledge of, okay, there is the Sabbath truth because my mom, you know, she would raise me clearly knew about the commandments but for some reason the sabbath <laughs> the sabbath one was kind of like yes, yes. you know that was never really okay it's actually oh, yes. saturday so i remember when i came to the knowledge of that i was about 10 and i remember it where i was just like so lord i've been praying to know the truth and i've been praying to be able to really you know give my heart fully to you because by now I'm in like high school I had just started yeah I want to say about seventh seventh grade or so so I had friends yeah. who were now talking about the fact that oh they go to church you know they go to church on Sunday or whatever and they would they could tell like I'm Christian in behavior you know like in behavior or whatever but when it came to came to the whole idea do you go to church it would be like no <laughs> I don't go to church right yeah. so I was on this path of like looking, trying to search or whatever, you know, search for where can I um, yes. find a place for that. And I yeah. remember when I came into the whole idea of the Sabbath truth and I remember being afraid because I was just like, wow, this, this means I have a whole like routine that I have to give up. Right. Yes. <laughs> and I, to be honest, at that time, I really wasn't prepared for that because in my head, it was oh, like, man. man, I don't want to have to. <laughs> now, what is interesting there is like you describing everything you're going through at 10 years old. You're like this brilliant 10 year old who is like so smart, who's, who's already making decisions like a grown person who already had so many experiences, exposed <laughs> to so many things. And now you con you know, you really being conflicted with a certain truth that right. will impact your life and your routine. And at yep. a young age, you have a decision to make that is huge. Yep. And I, so I want to say I didn't even, like, even after being, you know, finding that out at 10, I want to say it took another two years before I finally, 
officially made it to like an Adventist church and really started or maybe a year, a year, almost a year and a half before I finally made it to an Adventist church. And then, you know, it was just like, okay, I do, I do, um, do like that. And that I also, you know, want to, I want to be able to really follow what the truth is. Right. And I, I, I always find it just, you know, just amazing how God works because how I really even knew of what Adventism was, was quote unquote on accident because one Saturday as I was on my regular routine and on the bus, I saw people heading into a church, you know, and the curiosity of, oh, why are these people going into the church or whatever, you know, like, what are they doing? That's how I came to that, you know, that understanding that, wow, there's a whole Mm you know another aspect of it that i've never considered so yeah I, it's it's um i will say that for sure was one of the greatest struggles and then of course definitely on the flip side of that when i migrated here um i will say you know when you when you you start your your walk with god and you really yes. give your heart to christ um the devil definitely will have a way of trying to like, oh, yes. you know, <laughs> that's why, that's why all the attacks come, right? So like, then this is what happened now, uh, before you go there, so that, okay, you gave your heart to the Lord at a uh, two or 12 years at, old? No, at 14. So at 14 when years I, old, right. mm-hmm. then you came up here afterwards? Yeah, so I, I want to say I got baptized and then maybe a good three months later, I was here. Okay, so, so three months later, you were here and now you're saying, okay, there was that zeal. You gave your heart to the Lord, you were overcoming things, and now the devil is coming in. And um, you can probably continue. Let us know, and let us know some of the struggles. When you gave your right. heart to the Lord, what are some of the struggles you began encountering? And I know time is running rapidly, right. <laughs> but what are some of the struggles that you began encountering, not just before ac- accepting the Lord, but even when you accepted the Lord? Okay, so I will say um, some of the struggles definitely included uh, definitely spiraling backwards into, you know, the same addiction. And then, um, of course, from that, usually you'll have, like, you start to feel isolated. You start to feel like, you know, there's this cloud of, like, oh, I, I, I'm not good enough to do this thing anymore because how can I go out there and, you know, talk about God's goodness if clearly, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're facing this struggle kind of thing. Um, spiral in... Also, just forgetting your identity in Christ, because I remember, you know, even in like college, like that, that was a big thing. Like, you know, just you kind of feel like, wow, all these different things are happening. And did God forget you? So you start to lose who you are. And, you know, that that's just some of the struggles and the, the things that the devil does where he he wants us to always forget who we are in Christ because the, the more he allows us to forget who we are in Christ, the easier it is to, you know, to turn our back and to walk away. And I say us turn our backs because God never turns his back on us, right? Yeah. Okay. So now you are in college, you give your heart to the Lord, everything. Is, I mean, years are going by and now the same struggles you encountered with before is not coming back boom and now you are struggling and again yes i mean just to make it very plain one of the addiction was that also of pornography right okay and as a result now w- what is it that transpired for for you to now to have been able to finally overcome this like what exactly took place give us give us a few steps like what exactly um, actually took place in you now being able to be f- from a, a addicted to such a a, a, a habit now being able to break from such a habit that is plaguing many others right to be honest it's really just look into what jesus calls us to right because we have to understand that looking at that viewing that completely obscures everything right all the actual principles that god wants us to uphold as far as um yes. you know our sexuality our our mindset everything right and really, for me, it was just having to recognize, like, one, if you clearly feel ashamed about the fact that you watch this, then clearly something's wrong, right? That, that, yes. that by itself should say that um, it's, you know, it's something you need to let go. So from there, the steps that I had to take was that daily surrender, that moment yes. by moment daily surrender to Christ and really realizing that 
I have to trust him because of my own self, I can't do anything, right? I can only do everything that I do through him, right? Just like the Bible tells us in our, you know, our weakness, then he will give us his strength yes. in essence, right? And I, I feel like when it comes to any kind of addiction, when it comes to any sort of circumstance, this is the kind of things that we have to remember. Like, whatever it is, even if it's, you know, something even outside of, like, that type of stuff, it, even when it comes to, like, your health stuff, right? Yes. People who may be addicted to, oh, I feel like I can't give up this, you know, this, this chicken or whatever, right? Like, whatever mental blocks we are setting up in our minds, because a lot of it really has to come down to the... the, the um. The idea that it's a mental block. It's a mental hold. Of course, it's a spiritual one as well, but it's a mental block. You know, when we're telling ourselves that we have to, we have to do this. And I feel like the key is definitely in your moments of weakness, calling out to the Lord, yes. calling out to him, letting him know, like, I am weak in this very moment. And yes. another thing uh, people kind of think too is like, oh, once you overcome this, you're like forever good or whatever, you know, and it's yes. just like, no, it's, it's a daily, you know, it's a oh, daily yes. sanctification that you have to do because at any moment, the yes. devil is still a roaring mm -hmm. lion waiting oh, yes. to devour you. So it doesn't matter if it's been like 10 years since you he saw knows, something. He knows the right he strings still to pull. Knows, right, he, knows he still it. knows your weakness. So therefore yes, yes. it's, you know, it's a, it's a continual, um, sacrifice that you have to to do and a continual surrender that you have to do to christ to oh, yes. ensure that you're not like falling prey and you're not becoming a victim so i would say definitely start with prayer and calling out to god uh in you know in it and of course um solidifying a devotional life and just um really taking god at his word really learning how to trust him trust him and understand that we are weak he is strong and we cannot do anything by ourselves yes. we have to fully rely on him and through that it doesn't matter praise what it lord. is you know it doesn't matter what it is we'll overcome so praise the lord yeah. and it's powerful because the thing is when we know that one has gone, gained the victory then we others listening could know that you also are capable of gaining such a victory right. and um, as they see the experiences of others because it's the same god who did it for her is the same God who could do it for you. And whatever it is in our lives, like she's saying, you know, God has a power that is beyond just human strength. And as we call out and cry out, I believe the Lord is truly willing to be able to give such an right. omnipotent power that is all powerful that, um, you know, no, that nothing, you know, it, it could be able to break any evil habit, any wrong habit. Right. And, you know, that's powerful. So then, Okay, so now you 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 overcoming and um you know you 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 gaining the daily victories in your life. So then, now that you're actually having that experience, how is your life different now, and what is really motivating you to push forward? Um, so I would definitely say I have come to a place where I learned that uh, no matter what situation happened, I may not understand it in the moment. However, God has a purpose for it, right? And yes. You know, I, I, how I push myself forward now is just literally like trusting God, you know, like really recognizing that, um, yeah, there's, he already knows. He sees the, the beginning from the end, right? He sees what's going to happen. He sees what is ahead. And all I have to do is literally just depend on him. So how yeah. I help push myself forward now is a continual um, coming to him and, you know, acknowledging my sinfulness, my need of him, and my desire for his help. Because I, I feel like uh, without that, really, and without that constant reminder, you know, it's very easy to kind of like how Peter went through that, mo that moment where he became prideful, where it's like, oh, yes. well, I overcame this now, so I'm good, right? And it's oh, just yes. like, no, <laughs> you know, no, we're always going to be in a constant need of his help off his um his you know cleansing us so that's that's kind of uh, where I am now where I'm just yeah. continually learning you know there's still many things that I I have to go like you know as far as like how he wants us to become fully yes, imbued yes. with the fruit of the spirit so Definitely. you know it's it's a it's a daily process that's really what it comes down to it's a daily oh, yes. process it's a continual effort 
And as long as we truly seek him, you know, seek him first and truly seek to, to have his heart, I truly give it to us. We may not, not see it right away <laughs> in every circumstance and we may not yes. feel like it's really happening, but the more we actually surrender ourselves to him, yeah. So first of all, that's a blessing. So one thing we can be guaranteed right now, every, every step that we make in overcoming it makes the other one even easier, but we have to continually mm -hmm. walk. So never being stagnant, right. like you say, never being stagnant. The enemy right, right now is, will con constantly throw things at our uh, in our past, but we we can see from the experience that the Lord has been leading, and we know that the Lord will continue to lead. So, so before we end off as well, and again, you know, I pray that many uh, have been blessed, and many will be blessed who will be listening to this, and for those who are listening even on YouTube. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well so that way you can be able to uh, stay connected when we release more videos like this. However, before we end, I want to be able to hear from you. There are many others who are experiencing similar. You have shared many tips on, how, how, on different things that you have done as well that, that, that are impactful and that will definitely help people. But I want you to give us a summary to close out and let us know what are what is your encouragement, your words of encouragement for someone who may be experiencing something similar to your testimony right now they're listening right now they may be having a similar experience and they need help what would be your words of encouragement to that person um definitely first thing cry out to god he sees and knows your heart he knows what it is that you are struggling with he knows everything that you have faced and again in the midst of everything he is there. All he needs for you to do is to cry out to him. Cry out and ask him for, you know, his help. And he will certainly get you through it. And um, as well, never feel that you are so far gone that he cannot love you or that he's yeah. left you because his love completely covers your multitude of sin. As long as you, you know, repent and you choose in that moment that, Lord, that's it. I'm, I, you know, I'm turning away from this. I don't want to do this anymore. His grace is definitely sufficient and he will help you, help you through that. You know, you, you're going to, you may feel like you have rough patches. They all come. But as long as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, he definitely will help you to overcome every single situation, trials, temptation, whatever it is. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we definitely will be end off with a prayer. And I'd like you to also pray for individuals as well, because this is what I know for sure, is that um, in our own strength, we will never be able to overcome. Mm -hmm. And as we depend upon the very uh, strength that Christ has promised to us, he tells us very clearly in Philippians that you could do all things, or I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, do we truly believe that we can overcome even addictions through Christ who strengthens me? That right. we can gain the power today in Christ who strengthens me. And again, uh, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say of the Lord. So we see very clearly that the Lord indeed is willing to give us a power, a strength that is beyond just our frail human power, which is very limited, which is, uh, you know, which is basically limiting in its nature. However, God himself is willing to bestow and a power as we depend upon him and not our own strength, not where we say, okay, you know what, I will do it, whatever it is, but we can say, okay, you know what, Lord, I, I'm choosing to surrender my will to you, that you can work in and through me and truly being able to overcome. So if you don't mind praying for uh, individuals right now who may be listening and um, who may be having any sorts of struggles, any sorts mm -hmm. of addictions, whatever it is, that they may be able to uh, break from even the demon of addiction. Mm -hmm. And as a result, that Lord would truly give strength even today. And as we pray, you can know for a fact that the Lord says that, um, that if we truly uh, pray in faith and we truly believe that we can have the promise, that we have the assurance that we'll receive what we ask of him. So if you go ahead and just be able to pray for us even, even now to close off. Right. So let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you so much for your love towards us. We thank you, Lord, just for who you are to us. And God, we thank you even now that you have already given us victory. I pray, God, you see and know all the many people who are struggling, struggling with whether it's uh, addictions, whether it's, you know, just being able to trust you more, whatever the situation is, God, we are all in need of you. So I pray even now, Lord, for the person who 
may be listening or who may eventually listen to this, who is struggling with whatever addiction, who is um, struggling with uh, trusting you, struggling with um, sticking close by your side, God. I pray that each person will truly just surrender their complete self to you because you are more than strong and you are more than capable. You are more than willing to help us to overcome any trial, any temptation, any situation that we may fall into, God. You are able to help us through them all. So I ask Amen. even now, God, that you will just um, be with each person. Teach us how to love you more. Teach us how to trust you more. Teach us how to depend upon you and to take your strength and in, in um, exchange for our weaknesses, God. I pray even now that you'll continue to equip us to be better servants for you and just continue to be with us throughout this night as well and for the rest of our lives. We thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I praise the Lord. So again, we do thank you very much uh, for being able to join us tonight. Oh. And for those who are on, go ahead and be able to share it to your stories if you can. And also um, and any one, other platforms. Go ahead. One one short quote I was going to say uh, yes. that I think people, and it, Definitely. Uh, it could apply to Christians. Um, I think it's by Charles Spurgeon. And it said something to the effect of basically the snail made it to the ark because of perseverance, right? Yes. And I just want us to remember that because regardless of what we're facing, regardless yes. of, you know, whatever our situations is, as long as we are perseverant about following Christ, we will yes. actually get to our goal, which is, you know, yes. truly becoming like him. So just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before we leave as well, let us know what is your Instagram name. If others want to be able to follow you, that they may be encouraged by your continued life and experience. What is your Instagram name? So it's Afro Neekly, Afro Neekly. <laughs> and um, that's A F R O. N I Q U E L Y. Okay, definitely. So hit Afronically up and definitely. And um, we do appreciate you being able to join us this evening. And we pray that many will continue to be blessed. Yes. To definitely be able to share with others that yes, others may many, have an impact as well. And I pray some, you know, everyone listening, we're blessed by this and that the Lord will continue to be with us all. Yes, definitely. So appreciate it. And you all have a wonderful rest of your night, your day, whatever time you're listening. God's blessings to you all. Bye, guys.